In today's video, I'm gonna help you choose the best live performance software for you. If you're performing keyboard live or really anything live, then you will know you need tools to help you do the best job you can possibly do when you're on stage. Brett Pontecorvo here from LiveKeyboardist.com where I help you with the ins and outs of building a stable live performance setup with mastering sound design and with building a fantastic keyboard rig. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you five questions that you need to ask yourself before you purchase live performance software, and I'm actually not going to give any software suggestions in this video on purpose. If you know who I am and you've been following me for a while, then you probably will know which software I use for live performance. But um, with the intention of creating an unbiased video, I want to give you the questions you need to ask yourself to really make sure you are making a well thought out and vetted choice. So here are the five questions you need to ask and we're gonna break it into two categories, before you start searching the internet for live performance software and after. Question number one, what are your live performance requirements? So every music project is gonna require that you do something. If you're playing in a cover band, then you are trying to accurately recreate cover songs. You need specific sounds, you need them to happen in a specific order, and they need to always be the same every time. Or perhaps you're playing in something that is really uh, more of a soundscape and you need to access lots of different types of sounds spontaneously and no two shows are the same. Perhaps you need to be running clicks or running backing tracks or sending messages to other programs. Whatever these requirements are for you, I want you to write them down and rank them because it's really important when you go through to pick it that you know actually what you're trying to do because every single software is gonna do certain things more easily than others. And it's also pivotal that you do this first because the internet is full of sales pages that are trying to convince you that this particular thing is the best. But if you are secure in exactly what it is you're looking for, that's gonna help you really make an educated decision about what the best thing to use for your live performance is. Question number two, what are your live performance preferences and values? These are really simple things, but they're slightly different from the first uh, process, right? The requirements are things that are put on you. So those are things that are required by your project. But question number two deals with what's important to you. So is flexibility important to you? Is being able to really quickly change sounds at random important to you? Or is it really important that you can set it and forget it? Perhaps you don't want to change operating systems. It's important to you that you stay on your Windows machine. Or it's important to you that you're able to incorporate OSC messaging into your setups. These are things that matter to you. Perhaps you're somebody who has uh, an MPE controller and you want your live performance software to deal with that. So these are things that are really preferences. This is more like icing on the cake. Rather than does it meet the bare minimum requirements, these are things that are really preferential to you. Do you like a particular type of user setup? So this is something to think about. And then the final question, question number three, is how much money are you willing to spend and what computer do you have? So Think about what your budget is and also leave a little bit of wiggle room because sometimes you'll change software and you will need to update your operating system or you'll change software and you'll find that you need a particular type of controller. So if your maximum budget for a particular project is $500, then you wanna make sure that your live performance software is less than that so that you have room to add hardware if you need or make adjustments if you need. So we're about halfway through the video. I want you to let me know in the comments below, what are you looking for in your live performance software? What's the most important thing to you about building a software-based setup? Let me know, and if there are any questions that I missed that you think you would ask yourself before making a purchase, let me know that as well. So for the second part of the video now, we're gonna talk about what you should do once you search. So. Question number four is, what is this tool the best in the world at doing? Every piece of live performance software is gonna have one thing that it does exponentially better than everything else, and then probably a lot of features that really overlap. So certain softwares are really good at running backing tracks, and certain softwares are really good at making song-specific patch lists, and certain softwares are really good with, you name it, put in whatever you want there. But you wanna really find what is the best thing that this particular software does, and I want you to compare that to your list. 
Is this software's superpower lining up with what you are required to do for your particular project? Or is it lining up with one of your performance values, something that's really important to you? This is key to take note of because if you find that these things are lining up, that might be an indicator that you should try that software out. And if they're not lining up, then you can save yourself an awful lot of trouble and time by not trying that particular piece of software. And the final question I actually think is something that gets overlooked a decent amount. I want you to ask yourself, what is the price of this tool versus what is the value that this tool brings? Certain softwares are priced very low, but you don't get quite as much value for what you pay. Certain softwares are priced very high and you don't get the value that you think you should get for that price tag. So I want you to think about how much does this tool cost and what do I get in exchange for that price? I think it's something very important to pay attention to because it's not just about can you pay that amount of money. Maybe just because you can pay it doesn't mean that you should. But for that amount, what are you getting? Perhaps for some sum of money, you're getting every single item on your requirements list checked off. And perhaps that might actually be more valuable than a cheaper program that doesn't check off all of those boxes. So some things I want you to remember, and perhaps something that was the most groundbreaking for me, is that no one actually cares how you make the sounds hit their ears. Your listeners are concerned with very different things than what you are concerned with. So all of these things, all of these tools are really just about making it as easy and fast as possible for you to output your sound and get that music to the people who want to hear you. Now, if one of your choices lines up with mine, I've got instructional videos on the screen right now for how to build keyboard setups in Ableton and Gig Performer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time at livekeyboardist.com.